I am really wrong person to talk about government uh, debt because Estonia is uh, well known for uh, not having any any public debt. Almost uh, we we have by far the smallest uh, government debt. Uh, about debt. Let's let's see if the government wants to crowd, uh, crowdfund the project, a uh, railroad, the airport, whatever. A government. Well, well it's, it's so, still yeah. it's still kind of uh, similar. Just a kind of instrument uh, to basically facilitate that, but, but nevertheless. Hi, my name is Tavi Reivas. I am former Prime Minister of Estonia and currently a member of board at Blockchain Centre Vilnius. Uh, well, first of all, uh, uh, Estonia has been um, successful in a bit different sector, uh, uh, meaning that Estonia has been very, very successful in uh, creating uh, e-government, uh, but also using blockchain in, uh, in uh, governmental services. But uh, what is uh, Lithuania's uh, very positive competitive uh, angle or competitive advantage uh, is um, openness to blockchain technology in private sector. Um, this means that uh, if you are open to new technologies, uh, you have a real chance of um, seeing something big happening here. Uh, there are a um, lot of uh, big countries, a lot of um, very successful countries that are hesitative in adopting new things. That applies equally to e-government services, but also new technologies like blockchain and artificial intelligence. So I believe that um, for small countries like uh, Lithuania and Estonia, there is a real challenge uh, and opportunity to, to be open for new technologies and actually catch the wave of something really, really big. Well, there are a number of reasons why governments are very conservative. Uh, uh, openness to a risk, uh, openness to also potentially big reward is not uh, typically associated with, with governmental approach to things. Uh, but there again, I see that uh, small and um, fast-moving countries uh, have a competitive advantage because we have a tendency of being more prone to new ideas uh, perhaps also more prone to certain risks. So, uh, you know, it's not wrong to take a risk uh, if you are a government, but you need to notice that this is a risky project sometimes. And, and, and with technology, of course there are risks, but I would say that the rewards are a thousand times bigger. And, and, uh, and also practically, uh, we have been using uh, blockchain in, in uh, public sector for very long time to safeguard uh, data, for example. Um, it makes perfect sense. And, and uh, there is a use case right there. Uh, there are lots of other potential use cases that, that could come up, uh, but you, in order to enable them, you have to be open to the ideas. So, so yes, some con governments are very cons uh, conservative about technology, uh, not only AI and blockchain, also some of the governments are very conservative vis-à-vis uh, -vis digital identity, for example, which you know, works perfectly in Estonia for uh, 16 or, or 18 years already, and, and, uh, and we have benefited a lot from that. So I think it makes sense for, for governments to be more open to that, and, and those governments who are, and I hope that uh, Lithuania and Estonia continue to be open to new technology, those governments will actually win a lot and they will develop much faster. I think it is actually uh, a bit vice versa that smaller countries uh, are more uh, uh, innovative in, uh, in many cases. Uh, if you look at the most uh, successful digital countries uh, and then leave out the Baltics for a second, uh, we, we see Dubai, we see uh, Singapore, we see um, Ireland, a relatively small country. So, so um, 
there are lots of, of use cases and I certainly missed, uh, missed many. Uh, so so uh, those use cases show that, that in a smaller country it might even be easier to, to convince the decision makers to, to take this risk. And then small countries, of course, have um, um, perhaps a shorter or, or closer decision-making circle. So it's, it's in a way easier to be uh, very flexible as well. Uh, but on the other hand, I think that those decisions that have been proven to work in smaller countries could easily uh, go to the bigger countries and, and scale up. With technology, the, the, one of the best things is that it's easily scalable. Um, Again, one example, uh, a few years back uh, I signed a um, roadmap with Prime Minister of Finland, uh, Juha Sipila, to enable um, cross-border uh, digital services between two countries. Uh, now we are very close to opening a digital prescription that actually works across uh, the border, so you can get a prescription from a Estonian doctor and, and go to any Finnish pharmacy without any paper and you get it there uh, waiting for you uh, in a digital system. So that will be the first ever case of cross-border digital service, digital public service uh, happening. And I believe that this is something that could easily be scalable to a pan-European level or, or you know, make, make it work everywhere in EU. I am really wrong person to talk about government um, debt because Estonia is uh, well known for uh, not having any any public debt. Almost uh, we, we have by far the smallest uh, government debt. Well, well it, it's still it's still kind of uh, similar, just a kind of instrument uh, to basically facilitate that. But but nevertheless, I, I mean. Uh, um, not only perhaps borrowing, uh, but, uh, but in um, any sorts of registering rights and ownership. Uh, tokenization, uh, of course, is an option. Uh, I mean, uh, if somebody wants to uh, sell a part of, of, let's say, a cruise vessel or, or real estate, uh, today it takes very much uh, effort to to do that because in, in most countries in the world, uh, land register or, or um, a real estate register is something that you have to visit uh, physically. You need to go to notarius or you need to go to the registry and, and buying, um, like let's say, 1% or 10% of this property is almost impossible if you don't go through all those steps. Now, um, whereas tokenization, of course, would make uh, this uh, much more liquid so, so definitely uh, there is a logical business case there uh, and, and I believe in general um, this tokenization is too much uh, today towards uh, cryptocurrencies uh, and, and too little towards uh, other potential assets where registering ownership or right uh, could be uh, very well um, maintained in, in blockchain technology. So, in essence, uh, as a ledger keeping uh, technology, blockchain uh, has use cases uh, in, in many places where it's not used yet. <laughs>